All right, so we made it through 2023. It was a fun year buying sneakers for myself, and it was hopefully a good year for you guys as well. Uh, with the availability in sneakers nowadays, there's a lot of considerations, I guess, uh, for buying sneakers. And so I wanted to make a video and give you guys five tips on buying sneakers in 2024. I reached out to some of you guys on Twitter, got some really great feedback in a short amount of time. Big kudos and thank you to everybody out there that replied back to me. But let's go ahead and get right into this list. Now these tips are gonna be in no particular order, but I think that number five is probably the most important one, and that is budgeting. I can't stress to you guys how important it is to actually make a budget for your sneakers. You know, a couple years ago, people were probably really into buying sneakers on credit card and then trying to flip them and make that extra profit. That is something that you can do, but it's a lot harder to do in this day and age right now. There's a lot of different pairs of sneakers that are sitting, stuff that has been restocking. You just never really know the conditions of the market, which is why if you don't have the budget to be able to go out there and pay off your credit card at the end of the day, then you shouldn't be charging it up. And that's just good financial advice in general. The last thing you wanna do is go into really deep credit card debt because of buying sneakers, especially if you have loved ones out there. And ultimately, it's just not a very responsible thing to do with your income. There's other things you could be spending your money on then just another pair of Jordans and stuff. So throwing that out there from the beginning, budgeting is super important. If you get to a position where financially it makes sense and you can buy a pair of sneakers uh, at any given time, then kudos to you because you made it to the upper percent that maybe other people haven't made it to. But it's important to know your limits and not exceed those limits, especially in this temperamental market. Now, obviously my channel is based on sneakers. I do get a lot of free product here and there, and I do work with some companies here and there. So it does help the channel out quite a bit. I'm not an average consumer at this point. Hopefully you guys know that. So when you see me have a bunch of different pairs of sneakers and stuff on the channel, I know that I'm super lucky. It's super awesome that I've had like a hobby that's been able to turn into something more than that. And I'm eternally grateful for that, for my family's sake and everything else. Just being home and around them in the house is just super amazing. But I just know that I don't have an everyday normal person's scenario for buying sneakers. So if you see a bunch of different reviews here and there on my channel, the expectation is not that you follow the same suit. Hopefully you guys know that. but. Wanted to point that out. And that leads me to the next tip on the countdown, which would be to look for a sale on sneakers. With all the GRs that end up releasing nowadays, especially from Jordan brand, they're coming and they're going real, real quick. And a lot of them are sitting on shelves, which gives you the opportunity to get them at a discounted price, which is amazing. Like, so if you really want a pair of sneakers and it didn't sell out right away, I try to post on Twitter and like YouTube and stuff in the community section, as well as on like Instagram, like when like a pair of Jordan ones go on sale on Nike's website, because Honestly, if you've been waiting for that shoe, you wanted it retail, and now you can get it under retail, it's a great feeling to be able to do so. And shout out to Chase Oliver 68 and Jose for a day uh, for their comments over on Twitter on this. I do a monthly video on this channel where I post all my favorite deals that I find on sale, and you guys always are welcome to leave comments on your other favorite deals that you guys find on sale because it's a collective, as I mentioned. I want people to know of things that are on sale that they're interested in. Usually I just post the stuff that I personally like, but obviously you guys can add your two cents as well for cool things that come on sale. Like I think there's an equivalent feeling too of like getting like a hype limited drop and then also getting a pair for like super low price. Like I love getting a really, really good sale on a pair of sneakers. Number three is a tip that I don't think a lot of people think about and shout out to my wife. I actually asked her what would be some tips she would recommend and this is the one she thought of and that is knowing your shoe size. It seems like a simple one, but honestly, it's really good advice. There's models that you've never tried on your feet and they don't fit exactly the same as an Air Jordan 1 as an Air Force One, as an Ultra Boost, they all kind of have a different size even though they might be labeled as a US men's nine or nine and a half or 10. Sometimes they fit snug, sometimes they fit big. Explore that on content if you guys are trying to find the sizes. Reddit is a good spot as well. But the best thing you could do is actually just go into the store and try on the shoes. Go to your local Foot Locker and try on a pair of Air Jordan 1 highs. Even if it's not the colorway that you're looking for, it gives you kind of an idea and a feel. Try on the women's size as well. Try on the women's 11 because sometimes those women's exclusive come up and you really, really want them, they might feel a little bit narrow or snug comparison to the men's sizes. But I would recommend going in store and just trying on the Adidas Ultra Boost, the, the Nike Dunks, the Air Force Ones, the Air Maxes, the Jordan Ones, the Jordan One Lows. See how they fit on feet. If you do have an opportunity to buy a pair uh, that's a limited release or one that's really on sale, hopefully you have an idea of what size you actually are so it actually is the proper fit. Sometimes it's no fun when you get something that you're really excited to get and it's actually a half size too small or a half size too big. But hey, we're sneaker people and we wear a size eight to 12 anyway, so we'll make it work if we have to. I know you guys can relate to some capacity because uh, honestly, we've all been there. Sometimes that last size nine or the last size 10 is there, we have to make it work. Number two is an important one that you guys knew was coming and that is don't follow the hype and buy what you like. Shout out to the Legoats and then King the Conqueror and Mr. Smo7. All of them had very similar vibes on Twitter. You really don't wanna get buyer's remorse for something that you buy. Falling into that hype system is really a scheme at the end of the day because uh, there is people out there trying to manipulate the market to make the prices higher when there is a presale on an item that is gonna be releasing soon. So for those people that are newer to sneakers, you shouldn't be paying super close attention to the presale prices on select models because 
the pre-sale prices are overly inflated like crazy crazy high when it comes down to the actual release of a product like a couple weeks after the drop usually the prices are then at their lowest and in some cases the prices are under retail because the price of the supply and the demand has been peaked so the air jordan one in the satin bread colorway i'm sure had a resale price at some point then they released a bunch and then they released a bunch more and then they released a bunch more and then the resale is actually lower now than the retail was on that pair but originally i think the satin bread one uh, resale was actually a little bit high because historically we know that this has been a limited release and now we have a massive general release that ended up hitting and then wiped away all the resale on that specific model so if you're chasing the hype and you're just trying to buy those shoes because you're going to get a resale out of it you might be holding the bag for five six ten years before that price actually goes up again if it even goes up and if that pair put a 190 dollars hole in your pocket for the time being and you couldn't really afford it then you're going to be kind of sad because of that now if you have the other mentality and you just really wanted the model because you like the bread colorway you like the satin accents it was a nice looking model to you a play on a classic colorway with new materials and you bought the shoe and you got them at retail you're probably pretty happy about it because you got something that you wanted you didn't fall into the hype you bought something that was a little bit hyped up originally but you actually got a product you liked i think that that is the w i think a lot of people feel the same way about the royal reimagined because that is a colorway that i think really people resonate with if you get it at a discount obviously that's a w as soon as those go on sale again i'll be posting those all over the place because it's a great shoe it's a great colorway and the supply that they actually have on those exceed the hype right now so i think it's a perfect pair to get if you're looking for a pair of air jordan ones in like an og color scheme that has just kind of actually elevated materials on them i think it's a good one but it's all about you and what you really like if you don't like blue at all then this is not going to be a shoe for you mark sun 81 said it best he said that hype doesn't always equate to a great sneaker fads die and classics won't i know we've all fallen into that hype trap from time to time i just wanted to just throw it out there again though just try to be more cautious of the way you guys end up going about sneakers like an example i didn't even try for the powder puff uh, dunks i've never watched the powder puff show i don't know anything about the characters i was trying for a friend like who wanted the shoes but like for me i didn't even go for them even if there's resale on the shoes I didn't really want to fall into that hype trend. And if you follow the, the trend and you're making money on it, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not mad at it. It just, it's not something that I personally was looking for. So I'd rather spend my money on something else. Also, Robert 05 brought up a really good point. He said, buy shoes that fill your gap in your current collection, be it color, type of shoe, etc. There are tons of shoes that I end up passing on because it's too similar to something that I already have. Given that you can't buy everything, be strategic in what you do buy. And I love that. It makes sense to me. Like I have sometimes too many pairs of Air Jordan 1s now where I'm like, I don't really need all of those Air Jordan 1s. I definitely prefer wearing like the Travis Scott Air Jordan 1 lows over some of the other Air Jordan 1 lows that I have. But I have a bunch of different colorways now. So I know I'm a little bit of a different case because I have a YouTube channel, but strategically, it doesn't make sense to buy six more colorways of Air Jordan 1 lows if I already have the one or two that I really want. Or in that case, just save up for the one colorway you really want and the one that's gonna have the most rotation on your feet. So we made it to the last tip on the countdown. If you guys enjoyed this video, and you guys wanna see other top five videos on my channel, I'm gonna be trying to experiment with a lot of different top five content. Uh, so feel free to leave a comment in the comment section of something you'd like to see, and I'll be checking those out. But the last tip for buying sneakers is experiment with other brands. Shout out to Base Nick Fan for this one. He said you'd be surprised on the value uh, for your money. And I think this is a really, really great point. If you're used to your Air Jordans, your Nike Dunks, your Air Force Ones, your Nike Air Maxes, those are all great shoes for sure. But if you experiment with other brands, sometimes you break out of that mold and you're like, holy moly, like these are actually more comfortable. I like the color blocking on Adidas sneakers better than I do on some Nikes. If you're looking at for a quality of materials from like a New Balance 990 V3 to a Jordan Retro, like the New Balance blows it out of the water. But you wouldn't know that if you haven't tried out some of the other sneaker brands out there. I think that there are a ton of great brands out there doing a lot of great things. And so if you are in a narrow funnel of just Nike, just Jordan, or just Adidas, or just New Balance, I feel like you're missing out on a bigger picture of a lot of different things, which is something that I had a fatal flaw of doing for the first 10 plus years of me collecting sneakers. I was only Air Jordans, I was only Nikes. And at the time I lived in Beaverton, Oregon, I worked right across the street from Nike. So I, like, I felt like there was a bond there uh, to Nike where I had to be exclusive. But then Adidas Boots came out and then really changed the landscape. Damian Lillard played for the Blazers, but he also had Adidas contract which made me try out a pair of Adidas for the first time in many, many, many years. And then for comfort sneakers, there's so many other brands that are doing amazing stuff. New Balance is top of my list always. Brooks does really good stuff. Asics does really good stuff. And there's a ton of other brands that I haven't even tried out there on that space where I'm just like really, really blown away with 
where technology is on like running sneakers at this point. But ultimately there's a lot of great classics from every single brand. They have lots of cool collaborations on other brands as well. And if it's something that you're interested in, like wait for something to come on sale and see how the product is in hand on feet. And it might be something that you really, really vibe with. And as base Nick fan said, it's like there's a lot of value for the dollar in other brands other than Nike and Jordan. You are paying for that premium price tag of a, a pair of Nikes or Jordans when you guys buy that product. So sometimes you get a lot more value that doesn't have that like brand built into it. But man, the value is really, really good and is definitely worth exploring in my opinion. Anyway, I hope you guys found this video somewhat informative. It was a video that I thought of uh, now that it's a new year. I was like drinking my morning like coffee and I was like, this would be a fun one to discuss. So again, if you guys have other uh, top five sort of videos that you guys would like me to cover, I have fun with it and hopefully you guys enjoy the content. If you guys do like the video, drop a like in the video and appreciate you all for stopping by and watching. Have a blessed new year and hopefully we'll see you guys back on the channel. All right, peace guys.